The Jacob Media Sports Network, in partnership with 97.3 ESPN, brings you the Mays and Aton Show. Middays with Harry Mays and Aton Shander. Now, it's the Midday Show with Harry Mays and Aton Shander on 97.3 ESPN Radio. Harry, something tells me that the most exciting thing that's going to happen in the next two hours is the addition of Trey Westerberg on the show. Trey Westerberg from V Sin, is that who you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Now well, you have, it's, it's Mike Sennett. I'm Mike Sennett. He must have vacation. I he, didn't think these guys took vacation. Maybe what are they, Gil? Maybe no. he's with Gil in Altoona. <laughs> Seriously. Who the hell goes to Altoona, Pennsylvania Mike Gill. for vacation? Mike Gill. Just don't call it vacation. I know. Call it work. Yeah, call it a, a business trip. Seriously, or write it off yeah. on taxes or something. I mean, it's embarrassing. Unbelievable. It really is. I, I didn't leave the house. The only time I left the house this weekend, I actually thought I was going to have to go to the animal hospital because I was out with my dog for about 30 minutes, and we yeah. were in the shade the entire time. And I had to get my girlfriend to drive down like a, a half a mile with water because it was just incredibly hot. There were people that were melting. Mm-hmm. You didn't have. You don't have an animal. No. You don't have an iguana or anything that would require no. to go outside. No. I, 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 it's so, too much responsibility. For me. Exactly. Like if I had an animal, it would be a cat because then I can use. I had a cat before. I really enjoyed the the cat. And uh, that way, you know, you just fill up the, you know, the litter box, you, you know, clean it, and you put food and water out, and you can go away and not have to worry about anything. Yes, yes. That's the thing, is... This is like having a kid. Well, absolutely. This dog, and, you're yours. And this dog specifically, like that, is, it's not just like a lap dog. No. You know, I go into the Fox 29 hit Sunday mornings with Lauren Johnson. She has a small lap dog. Mm. Nice little pup, right? But that dog can be left alone. Like, it's on a chair, Oh, she brings it into work. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sits on a chair, a completely, like, cool. Me? Yeah, you can't do that. I have to have the, it's, you know, what you see it all the time in, like, these cop shows or dramas, right, where they handcuff the prisoner to them, and they yes. have to walk around with the prisoner hand, like, you ain't going anywhere. Right, right. And they slap that. That's me and the dog of my life. Yes. But I get it. You know, I understand. Trust me, the dog is more popular than me, and I like that. See, all the all the stuff you give me, and I can't say the word I wanted to, you give me about wanting to be in the spotlight and constantly trying to, you know, be front and center. Yeah. The dog gets more, and I'm fine with that. I play the back role when I walk the dog. Good. But my point of all of this was yeah, wait, is there a point yeah, here? Yeah, is that you didn't leave the house. No, I did not. Now, how much how much? Friday TV? night, I went out uh, for dinner. And when I got back at, like, maybe 9.30. Oh, my God. 9.30 on Friday night, I was inside until I left for your studio today. I did not move. Okay. Now, how much? Oh, it's. do you know it's Tim McManus' birthday today? I did not. Happy birthday to T-Mac. Love T-Mac. Did you do anything outside of watch sports? I know you watched a two-hour movie, but that was this morning, That right? was this morning. I watched the Deadwood movie. All right, we'll talk about yeah. that today at 1250. Zach Berman, who had a huge announcement, is going to join us at 1 o'clock. Yeah. And we're live on all the, str- uh, all the platforms, you know, all the ones that Harry loves, Facebook, yeah. Twitch. And I just realized um, when I look up and I see the, the feed, the video feed, I look like John Cruck no, on the Phillies broadcast. No, I look like Cruck. I'm all like slumped over. Well, we uh, kind of both are. Yeah, right it's, it's, a, it's a bad look for me. Okay, I, I'm glad you brought that up because do you see that big box that says HLFDW black thing? Uh, yes, I do. Those are three more of these type of chairs here. Oh, right? okay. And I told you about that trapezoid-like table. Yeah. That's on the other side of the apartment. That's here. Okay. So when we go to the new place. For the new studio, yeah, yeah. There's no more slouching. Yeah, I'm there's all no slouched more, over. Because uh, we're on this couch. I look couch, like I'm a mess. No, this couch is for watching King of Queens. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I put something else Good on. Lord. How did it get back to this? I don't know. But my point of it is that you're not going to have to slouch anymore. Okay. You're going to be sitting up straight. You're going to be sitting at a desk in like a real dumpy. studio. No, it's just the angle. Yeah. All right. It's the and plus the lighting. Is well, bad. I know. I I I, I never I never have a good angle. I disagree. I, I've seen when it comes to video. What feed. about that still shot behind us? Yeah, that wasn't bad. No. That's... Well, that was done by a professional. Correct. That was. But I'm saying. You, that's still a good angle. You realize we're three days away yeah, I, from training I realize, camp? So here are a couple things going on. We have to. Talk, I guess at some point we have to lay out what's in front of us. We actually have a busy Monday. We're three days away 
Carson Wentz is tied for number two for MVP odds. Is that right? It is. He's nine to one. With who? Do you know the other two guys? All right, let's. The obvious one is who? Who's uh, the number Brady. one odds on favorite to win the MVP? No, actually, Tom Brady is not. It's not. Aaron Rodgers. Mm, you're in the right ballpark. You're playing the right game. Um, Russell Wilson. Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck. Okay. Now you're on to something. All right. Now you're cooking with gas. Okay. You know, we don't say that enough about Chris. That's a great Chris phrase. Yeah, I, I say that, too. Was that, is that one of his? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't want to say it's, it's like, I'm not going to go, you know, Mike Anthony, who, who created the violation nonsense. Right, right, right. No, no. But Chris used to always say that on, I heard him say it a lot on satellite. Mm-hmm. Now you're cooking with gas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so who's the odds-on favorite, though? Who's the number one? Because Carson is tied for second with two other guys. So who do you think is the odds-on favorite to win the MVP? Uh, Mahomes. There you go. Six to one. Really? Yeah. Now, you've thrown, I think, both of the names that are tied with Carson at nine to one. That would be Andrew Luck and Aaron Rodgers? That would be. Okay. Now, that's a lot of pressure. And I'm not saying, like, oh, how much? I'm just saying. I didn't think that Carson would be as high. I thought he would be, like, maybe a notch below. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the rest of the roster. Like, you know, Las Vegas sees the the weaponry that Carson Wentz is going to have at his disposal, uh, you know, courtesy of, you know, what Howie Roseman and Joe Douglas before departing for the Jets oh, Mr. You know, have, Douglas. have bolstered that this offense where it, it, it literally, you know, you could sit here and say, you know, this could be, the biggest, uh, highest-scoring offense that the Eagles have ever had. Remember, with Chip, that was year one. Mm-hmm. I think that still stands. I'm not sure. But that was Mickey Mouse. Okay. That was a Mickey Mouse offense. Well, I mean, you know, it was a pretty good year for Deshaun and LaShawn. It was. And Mike Vick had some great games <laughs> yeah. and so forth. But Foles, this, that was this is more sustainable. Two, Yes, I you know agree. What I mean, I like, agree. I believe, at least I believe. No, that. I think that's a good point. Yeah, and we'll talk to Berman about this at one o'clock. They got a solid offensive line as long as they, you know everybody, you know, if he, now, Jason Peters, if he could survive sixteen weeks. Yep, this is going to be a really good football team. Now, here's what I love about the MVP odds. I don't know if you can see it without being totally hunched no, over. No, I can. Sixty-six to one odds to win the MVP. Guess who's sitting there? Dak Prescott. Absolutely right. Yeah. Think about the names that this is your quarterback. Mm-hmm. Think about the names that are above. Aaron Donald is the same odd as you to win the MVP. Mm. 66 to 1. A defensive player. Wow. Is the sa- has the same. Kirk Cousins is even higher. Your teammate, Ezekiel Elliott, is a 50 to 1 Man. shot. I mean, what is that saying? It, again, there is such a conflict with Dak, and I love how it's such a clean percep- – like, that tells me so much about the perception. Yes, I know yeah. money, but sports gambling is, is a lot about perception into reality. And I think it's, it's just – like, Baker Mayfield. Think about the names that are ahead of him. Jimmy Garoppolo, Jared Ga- – Yeah, Lamar Garoppolo Jackson. coming off injury, too. Yes, Alvin Kamara. Yeah, Alvin – well, he's, he's a dynamic player. He is, but when you've got Drew Brees as a 14-to-1 shot – No, I, here's the and one. And Kamara at 50-to-1, and you're Dak Prescott, and you're sitting at 66-to-1? Lamar Jackson and Mitchell Trubisky are ahead of him. Yes, Baker Mayfield's 12-1. to 1. Yeah, I know. That's, Mayfield that's... had one season. Well, well they, Lamar did too. Right, but they've got a lot of weapons now. You're you know right. I mean? You're right. And, no, and, they're, right. and they're like a sexy team. Everybody's going to be taking the over and wins. I, I don't even know what it is. It might be somewhere around, you know, eight or nine wins for the Browns. I'm t- I guarantee you everybody's taking the Browns over. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Although I did see, you know, some of these odds for them to win the division. Uh, I'm not necessarily geeked up on. I had it here as far as, you know, winning the AFC North. Well, you think about Pittsburgh lost a lot. You know, they lost their best wide receiver, arguably one of the best in the game. They lost their running back. You know, they're they're kind of retrenching on the fly with Ben Roethlisberger. Yes, I understand that, but they still have Roethlisberger. And to be fair to the Steelers, every time they've lost a big-name wide receiver. Oh, they just keep going. Yeah, I know, I know. Now, running back, you're on to something. Right. Uh, And again, Everybody will tell you that they were better without Bell last year, blah, blah, short sample size. I don't know. But here's the thing. Browns plus 110. Steel, they're the favorite mm-hmm. at plus 110. I don't know if I would put – I mean, that's not really a payoff at all. The payoff might be in Baltimore at plus 325. Right. Where they can come back and do something with that defense. And it's Lamar Jackson's team now. Absolutely. So Flacco's out of there. Absolutely. Isn't he in Denver? 
He is. I think he's in Denver. He is. Yeah. Now, you, you want MVP odds for Joe Flacco? Yeah, what, what are those? Oh, my I think goodness. Denver's going to be pretty bad. Yeah, I, I think so, too. Flacco is not too far below Dak. He's the next ranking at, at 80 to 1. Okay. He's with Mariota. Correct. Okay. Now, here's the question. What would it take for Carson Wentz to win the MVP? Let's be realistic about this. 609-403-0973 is your phone number. We'll talk about the Phillies. I- I'm not as excited. Maybe Harry's excited. I know your boy Drew Smiley came out. I couldn't believe the, the effort they got out of Smiley yesterday. Listen, I- until he does it again. Well, I know, but he gave him six. What did he give him, six innings? Probably should have gone seven. That was but... like uh, two more innings at least than Vinny Velo would have given him. I saw your tweet. Yeah, you couldn't wait Jeez. to get that out. Oh, I know. You couldn't I actually win. watched that game yesterday. Well... <laughs> It's because you couldn't go outside and play golf. No, I know. It was too hot. Right. The golf was basically over at like 2.30. Yeah, we have to talk you know? about Shane Lowry. I think yeah. he made another trip to Bushmills. He might have. Saturday night? Yeah, he, he might have. Just got whacked out of no, his mind? No, he doesn't. No, he no? didn't get whacked. No. You sure? Is it, what, does this guy not drink? I, I'm, he's, not, he's not whacking Bushmills the night before the biggest round of golf in his life. Maybe he's trying to cool himself out. He's not blowing lines of coke, I can no, tell you no, that. No, 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 he's not. <laughs> you know, man? no. So he's doing something to calm his nerves. Well, Whiskey's a pretty good thing to do it. You they, know, all the movies, the old time, like Deadwood, they always drink whiskey well, to Well, they drink whiskey when they get up in the morning That's true. on that show. They wake and drink. <laughs> Swearing, he's got the bottle in his mouth as soon as he wakes up. Can you, I can't imagine, and I know I say this, you know, living a life of doing something else waking up, but... I can't imagine, like, taking a sh- Like, you wake up and you take a shot of whiskey. Wow. I know. <laughs> you know? Like, I know. That is a statement yeah, of in That's life, a whole right? different level. Seriously, yeah. man. I went at it way too hard this weekend. I'm feeling the effects. What do you mean? Did you go out? No. You just drank? You yeah. sat at home and drank? <laughs> yeah. What else are we going to do? All right, well, it's like 100 degrees outside. So what did you do? You watched golf? You watched, Did you watch any of the fight? No. I did not. I have no interest in that. No interest in Keith no. one time? Who the hell was the guy that Pacquiao fought? Keith one time Thurman. Thurman? Yeah. I don't think he lost. I think it was undefeated up until that time. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Now, the guy got knocked down, and then it went the distance. The best part about the fight was at the end. And, Josh, I don't know if, if you or, or Hunter have this. I'm going to find this because I think I do, so I can send it over if I get it here. But the best part about the whole fight was – the end, when the guy comes out and says, ladies and gentlemen, you know, in a split decision. And everybody's like, split decision? And you hear boo and all this stuff. Thurman got knocked down in the first round. The only guy that got knocked down, the only time it got knocked down. Okay. And at no point. Was it a slip? No, no, no. Pacquiao knocked legit? him down. Yeah. Okay. And at no point was there anything along the lines of a Thurman, like, 10-7 round. In which you would say, like, he just definitively beat Pacquiao's ass for six to nine minutes. Mm-hmm. So the fact that Thurman got around was just a shady result. Well, yeah. And they just You're tried to. You're shocked by this? Well, no, but I'm just. No, I'm not shocked at all by it. I was, I'm laughing. I'm laughing my ass off because even the crowd was like, are you serious? Where was this fight? Vegas. Oh, okay. Vegas. Yeah. I believe. Yeah, it was in Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen. You know, you know the, the best punch that I saw this weekend. It made my made, made my weekend. Was Buzz Aldrin? Did you see this? No. What's what's I Buzz sent doing? the I sent the audio to uh, to Josh. Buzz Aldrin. Of course, this was the fiftieth anniversary of the the lunar landing this over this past week, right? And Buzz Aldrin is making the rounds, and he's he's at some uh, you know celebration or something. And what some was guys he making the rounds too. I don't I don't know where Mars? it was. Some Venus? guy. No, he was on on Earth. Oh, okay. But he's some, back. Some conspiracy theorist approaches him and gets right in his grill and uh, he just starts saying all this, you know, uh, this awful stuff. And Buzz Aldrin just cold cocked him right in, the, right in the chin. Do we have audio of this? We have the audio. Oh, I got to hear this. I missed this. Yeah. Let's listen, please, to Buzz Aldrin. Now, it's just some random dude. Or, how old is Buzz? I don't know. I got to look. I knew you were going to ask me that. I mean, he's he's got to be in his he's 80s, right? Probably 70s or 80s. Yeah, I would imagine. Now, I I'll respect I respect a man who is he's 89. 89. If you are 80 plus and you're out there throwing punches, you can do whatever the hell you want. You can say whatever the hell you want. You can do whatever the hell you want. Man, at this point, you've earned it. If you've been able to survive 
on this planet right. for 80 plus years, and you're out there throwing punches he's throwing, he's throwing, as a result of conflict. I mean, this was a solid punch. So this is Buzz Aldrin conflict resolution. Yeah. Now, uh, real quick, before we hear this, I guarantee you that he's throwing, he threw a punch at one other guy on that trip. I get like. What do you, you mean when they were on <laughs> yeah, the yeah. going to the moon? Yeah, I <laughs> guarantee it. it was probably slow motion. You think when they were, they're floating around? Absolutely. And, and no get gravity. over here, you son of a bitch! I guarantee <laughs> you that he said that. Just he's eighty nine years old and he threw a punch at somebody. He's a I, feisty dude, I man. Guarantee, who are the other guys? He's five uh, ten. Right. Yeah. Now, what was the other? Who, he was the second guy, right, Buzz, to land on the moon. Neil Armstrong. Oh, I thought Neil was number one. Not Neil Diamond. No. <laughs> Buzz Aldrin, I thought, was number two, right? Or was Buzz? did Buzz push Neil out of the way? Isn't that how the story? Neil was one, see? I guarantee you. So you think there was a fight? Oh, there was a my beef? God. I think it was after that. I guarantee you Buzz was all ready to go. Buzz is pissed that yep. he wasn't the first one to set foot on the moon. <laughs> There's He's a logistical throwing... reason why Neil was first. There was. Because of his seat? No, because Buzz is the engineer. Okay. Yeah, and I guarantee you that Buzz wasn't happy about being the engineer because Buzz is a guy who can do everything. I think Buzz was more concerned about making sure that the thing stayed on the moon and landed than he was about if he was first off the thing. Nah, they were just doing some shoot in Area 51. He was all right. Yeah. That, well, that's what this guy basically is telling. All right, let, all right let's, let's, let's hear the audio. Hey, Buzz. You really like the picture, don't you? You're the one who said you walked on the moon when you didn't. Calling the kettle black if I ever thought of it. Saying I misrepresented get it myself. Away from me. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. Boom. A thief. Now, what a did he say? Coward, steal? a liar, and a thief. What did he say? I have no idea. How is he a thief? I, I don't know. He, has he been stealing money this whole time? Did he steal one of the his spaceships? Is yeah, he I mean, building he, his own? You gotta, I got to show you the, the video of this because, I mean, the audio doesn't do it. No, this is justice. amazing. This is absolutely amazing. I, I guarantee I you know, that I he's I can't believe you didn't see this this weekend. When did this happen? No, I was watching a bunch of different stuff, too. Not just King of Queens, man. I don't know what you think goes on here at this household. But well, I was watching a bunch of different stuff. I was trying to catch up with Shane Lowry. I even saw the thing. I can't Josh it, even man. saw it. And I'm way more out of touch than you are, Aton. Yeah, I understand, here, man. This is it. This is from two days really, ago. Really? I get it. Um, here we go. Buzz Aldrin punches a conspiracy theorist. Oh, on, so this is the, what, Saturday? Yeah, this was over the weekend. Yeah, I'm just going to... I can't believe it, man. This is right. hilarious. So, yeah, they're definitely somewhere. It looks like in a hotel lobby, right? Some right? place nice and warm. And here's the guy he's right outside. here. He's outside. Now, Buzz he has a suit. Him. Buzz has a sport coat yeah, on. Yeah, Buzz this. looks Watch. really. Boom. Oh, man. You see that? All right, this is what I love about this. Buzz, Buzz is dressed him. to the T. Okay, now I just And came... this guy's a lot taller than he Buzz. He is. I just came from the men's warehouse here in Concha Hockey. Okay, I've been they're, there. They're amazing guys there. They're all Yeah, they're awesome. great guys. And they know, they listen to the show, they know us and everything. And oh, yeah? Yeah, we love them. Yeah, absolutely. Are they going to start advertising? Well, uh, I don't know. They, they hooked me up. I'll oh, just, okay. I'll just that. Oh, so that's nice. Well, listen, I'm, I'm trying to get a foothold in. Oh, okay. Right? I'm trying to, you can't just kick it in, all right? got to get your toe in the I door I bet first. my name wasn't even mentioned. No, trust me, it was. It this was. was all Fox 29. And no, th there, was a, there was a radio mention as well. Trust uh -huh. me, you were in there, okay? I guarantee you. In, in fact, I there bought was, stuff in there. Is that right? Spot, yeah. Okay. There was a guy that I ran into, really nice guy, George Bull. Mm -hmm. Does Bull Construction. Okay. Knows, uh, knows me from the – he heard my voice. He was changing in the stall next door. And he heard and my voice. And he heard voice, your, your and voice. And he came out, yeah. And what do you think? He, knows he, he didn't run. No, like, no, no. For the no, doors. Not at all. You so, think he knows me from 94 or something? So what are you trying to do? 10 get, years to get ago? this guy to give you flooring or something well, in your I, house? I, I brought it up. I'm sure you I did. I brought it up. <laughs> now, I want to get into that at 1230 because okay. uh, I, I don't know what to do. Part of me thinks that I have two big home construction projects mm -hmm. that I think would be entertaining for the masses if I filmed me and – my girlfriend's brother-in-law, and anybody else that wants to oh, help. Oh, you're going to do it. Yeah, I think it – well, only for the purposes of filming it. Mm. You know, setting up a couple of cameras, maybe get Chris Gregory to come down and – He's the, he's a professional. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. All right, 609-403-0973 is the text board. Here's where we're at right now. I know we bounce around, but welcome to the Maze and Aton show. This is pretty much Well, especially in late day. July. I mean, there's <laughs> nothing going on. No. I mean, okay. what, what happened to the focus? <laughs> I mean, if you want me to break down, you know, uh, Shane Lowry's – 63 or whatever it was on Saturday. Break. I do before we break. 
So here's what's going to happen. Before we break, we'll lay out everything for you. 609-403-0973. Again, we're on the all platforms. Twitch is Maze and Aton. Facebook Live as well. And our Try not to look channel, dumpy today. Shander Show. It's just a matter, man, of, of your slouch. That's Well, all. yeah, plus the, you know, it's like, this couch gives a lot, like the cushion. Yeah, my dog. So you're is... kind of squashed down here. You you're, know, what I'm you're saying? on the dog seat. Right. right. That, that's why. Yeah. This is going to be the chill lounge. This will be in a completely different room. You won't have to sit on these okay. couches unless you want to watch me watch King of Queens or you watch something else. Like that's what you can do is you can go to the other room. Mm-hmm. I can sit there and watch King of Queens. You know, somebody can play a video game and you can watch golf on the golf channel. Okay, sounds good. Six zero nine four zero three zero nine seven three. What would it honestly take? Carson Wentz is nine and nine to one to win the MVP. What would it honestly take for him to win it? Again, not just Eagles win the NFC East or Eagles thirteen and three. I mean, you'd have to look at Pat Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. The problem that Carson Wentz goes up against is three of those four guys, or technically, I'm sorry, two of the three guys that he's now battling for this award are in a different conference. Right. Here's what he's going to have to do. Stay vertical. Just that? I mean, just look, that's number one, though. Well, that's one, number though, one, okay? yeah, but that's Because assumed, he was on his right? way to winning it a few years ago yep. until he got hurt. So, I mean, <laughs> he's going to have to. That would be the big thing, right? He's going to have to throw for over, you know, 4,500 yards. You know, he's going to have to have 30, 30 some odd touchdowns, you know, a, a modest number of interceptions. It's single digits. You know? The right. Eagles are going to you know, win 11, 12 games yeah. in order for, for him to be in the mix. I agree. Before we listen to Shane Lowry, are you really excited? Uh, like, are you really interested with the Phillies? Am I interested? Yeah. Well, they're off today anyway. I know. I know they're off, but they won a series. Yeah. You know, they won yeah, two they games they for the first two. time, and God knows, Thursday into Friday. And so Saturday was the only time they've lost. And that and was, was NOLA. A, yeah. Not only was it NOLA, but they lost to a pitcher. Yeah. A pitcher beat them and did everything. He, that was the guy who was supposed to pitch yesterday. They moved right, him they up, moved I him guess. Up. That pitcher showed more heart than anybody on yeah, this Phillies team the last four weeks. Yeah, what is it, Musgrave or something like yeah. that was the guy? Yeah, because I, I looked at Was it Joe Musgrave? He was Musgrove. Musgrove, He right. was supposed to face Velasquez on Sunday, and then, of course, you know, uh, Smiley gets in there. But his last eight games, his last eight starts... He was actually pretty good. He had a 3.89 earned run average, Musgrove. So that was their best chance to win, Okay. the Pirates. Okay. But they, they, they just moved him in there it was, against uh, Nola. No, not a good – No, it was, it was Eflin, wasn't it? It Saturday? was Eflin. Friday it was, was Eflin. Nola, right? No, Friday was Arietta. Oh, yeah, Friday. They won right. that game. That's it right. was Eflin, my That's bad. Right. Come on, man. Yeah. Get, will you get it together over there? I know. Unbelievable. Now they go to man. Detroit. What do you think? This looks legit, right? I mean, these games, these interleague games against, like, donkey teams, it's bad. Like, I don't really have a whole lot of interest Okay, wouldn't the Detroit you, Tigers. Let me ask you a question. And, Josh, if you guys could try to figure this out for us as well, I'm going to tell you about $250. Do you have... How many games each year... Does a team play interleague? Do you know? It varies uh, because of the imbalance league. Oh, you have one team. That's right. One more team. All right. So do you? is there a way to kind of figure out the variance? And we don't need an exact number, but if it's a ballpark. Why are you interested in that? Because I would start by eliminating those games from the schedule immediately. Oh, you're trying to get down to like what? How many games are you looking to trim off? Listen, if I could trim 30 games off the schedule, then that's better than what we have right now. I, I have an idea. I See, this is what happens on this it's show. It's only a two-game series, it looks like. In yeah, I get it, but that, that, listen, I have an idea. Okay, let's start there. We also have Harry breaking down Shane Lowry. and That guy was impressive. Right. Now there, oh, and my predicament with the house. Okay. So we got a bunch of Deadwood as well. But I'm going to jam a lot of. Do you think this is a boring Monday? We got a lot of stuff going on before Zach Berman at one o'clock.